there weavers welcome back this is grace with tangled webs weaving and today i wanted to demonstrate some edge finishing on uh, your hand woven items so specifically i am going to be demonstrating edge finishing that you would use on rugs but you can also use some of these on whatever you want in a previous project i wove a uh, floor rug that originally the pattern called for doing a full Damascus edge and I decided to instead of doing that I would use a uh, moray edge. So if you want to see me demonstrating that edging you can look at the video that uh, there's a link to up in the corner. But I thought that it would be helpful to go ahead and demonstrate the full Damascus edge and also a couple other edge techniques. Uh, one of them being the woven edge or twined edge. And I have a couple samples here. So this here is the Mori edge. And you can see that it leaves a nice edge. And uh, there's a couple different ways to finish the uh, the warp threads that stick out. Um, you can either knot them and have them just lay against the back. You can knot them and have them sticking out and having a fringe. Or you can do like I did and you can take those and feed them back up through the weft and uh, bury the ends. And I do that with a, I can pick it up, uh, with a tapestry needle. So I, it's a long involved process, but it works. Um, the other edge technique, the woven or twined edge, is um, an edging that uh, you start at one side and you basically weave, hand weave, each warp thread uh, through and it starts out uh, with an angle and depending on how many um, threads you use uh, it will create this angle and get wider and wider until you uh, get to a certain point and stop adding threads and then it is uh, the same width along the entire length of the rug and then you finish it off with a uh, multi-strand braid here. Um, the Again, uh, the warp threads that are in here um, end up getting buried in the uh, weft. So again, this is a very long involved process. I would say it probably took me longer to do the edging on this rug than it took me to weave it. Um, and this particular rug took a long time to weave. So uh, let's see, there's a couple other um, edging techniques that you can use. Um, these two items just have a simple um, braided, or I'm sorry, twisted uh, fringe and these are scarves and you can see that I've just taken uh, usually what I do is I divide the uh, number of warp threads into groups of two or three twist those together and then uh, twist the though two of those groups together in the opposite direction to create the the fringe, the twist. So you can see those here and there. Um, and then you can also just knot your fringe and leave it natural. And this is a a fine ending or a fine fringe for 
um, something that is not going to get a lot of washing because uh, especially with the wool uh, if you wash it a lot um, it will tend to start getting kind of uh, ratty looking so uh, this is wool but if you take uh, good care of it wash it by hand dry it flat um, this this type of fringe should be fine and it's kind of fun it's nice and drapey um, so here again this is a little sample I did and I just knotted the ends and left the fringe um, natural you can see they're kind of getting a little um, ratty looking uh, just from handling and and just from the initial wet finish, finishing so uh, the first um, edge that I'm going to demonstrate will be the Damascus edge since that's the one that would have been on this uh, this rug but I didn't so let's get started we have our rug set up here and I have removed all but the last couple um, strands of my warp protector uh, just to make it a little bit easier and I'm going to put um, a couple books down on the rug to weight it and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. So with the Damascus, it's typically worked from the back edge or the back side first uh, because the front side looks a little bit better. And it's worked from right to left and you um, work it in two stages. So you'll do uh, from right to left, you'll do one side and then you'll flip the rug over and again do right to left. Now with the Damascus edge, you do still need to protect the warp uh, to, for somehow. Uh, you can knot it and leave um, a fringe. You can knot it and uh, braid the fringe. Um, you can, or you can take the uh, warp ends and feed them back up through the warp and bury them so that they're not seen. So let's go ahead and begin. So starting from the right, you're going to take the first two uh, threads. You're going to pass the right thread over the left thread and bring it back under and pull it up. And that thread will go to the top. Then you take the next thread in line and sorry I needed to remove my warp protector so let's start that again and let's take the warp protector out so what I will do is I will pull out um, a half a dozen or so uh, threads to work at a time and leave my warp protector in there. All right, so let's do that again. Take the right thread over the left thread, bring it under in a half hitch, and pull it up. Don't pull real tight, um, but just snug it. So then take that left thread, which now becomes your right thread, Pick up the next thread, take the right thread over the left thread under the loop, and snug it up. Pass the thread, left thread to the right hand, grab the next thread over through the loop, and up. So we will just keep doing that. And you could finish the rug with just a half Damascus. So this would be called a half Damascus. And I will go, um, I'll probably go maybe halfway down the rug before I flip over uh, just so that it 
will give me more opportunity oops that goes up there to show you different uh, edging techniques i'm going to move my books out of the way a little bit so i'm just going to pull those out of the work protector as i come to them so you can see that's starting to leave a very nice clean edge So we can and you can see that I'm keeping when I snug that up, I'm trying to keep that fairly even. This edging goes fairly quickly. So if you're looking for something to leave a nice edge and you still want a fringe, you can do the full Damascus. Getting too many ends in there.
Okay, so that's about halfway. And you can you can see here how I probably got a little oh no, it's fine. Um you can see how this is snugging the weft up. Um, along here so this is this is a little bit loose uh, from the warp separator not keeping it really snug uh, but this kind of snugs it up makes it uh, consistent and um, just gives it a really nice look so, so I'm not sure what happened but I lost the first part of my video so um, I'll try and describe what I'm doing here. As you can see, I am keeping, I kept the rug with the back facing up. And I started again from the right hand side. And I did just like on the previous round of the uh, half Damascus, I am taking the right hand thread I'm passing it over the next left hand thread and pulling the end through the loop that's created. And then I'm, instead of pulling up, I'm pulling down, which is the natural, natural direction that the thread wants to go. So I'm just going to continue on here until I get about two-thirds of the way along the original uh, half Damascus and I decided to leave the one-third as a half Damascus <laughs> so I can show you some various finishing techniques with that. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. So we've got, um, I did about two-thirds of uh, the edge in the full Damascus. And we're going to go ahead and leave the uh, other, the last third in a half Damascus and do a couple different uh, edge treatments on it. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to split this in half. And on half of it, I'm going to tie an overhand knot, let's see, two, four, six, eight. all right, those are even. Uh, so on two of them, I'll tie an overhand knot, and I like to use a tapestry needle, they're nice and strong, to use it to tighten it up so it's very close to the edge. <clears throat> So an overhand knot is you wrap it around your finger and then go through the loop. And I'm using two strands for each knot section. And these you do want pretty tight. Uh, your edge is protecting your weft. So you don't have to worry about them pulling into the weft uh, like you would if there was no edging. If you were doing uh, the overhand knots directly on the uh, weft edge, uh, like over here where we've not done any edging, then it, it would tend to pull it up and you might do a little bit different uh, technique and we can demonstrate that also in a in one of the uh, successive videos I'm going to be doing on edge treatments okay <clears throat>
And the reason I use a tapestry needle is it's nice and thick and strong. Um, you don't have to use a tapestry needle. Okay, so there is one edge treatment. And then we can um, cut these very short. And you can see how they will tend to lay towards the back. Okay. All right, now these uh, we will bury into the weft. So I'm going to take my tapestry needle. It's got a nice big eye on it. And I'm going to just feed that through there. And sometimes it's a little bit easier than other times. So if you take and fold it over the needle and then hold it real tight and then pull it off, it kind of creates a edge to push that through. All right, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to feed it back through the weft in between the front and the back. So you can see And we'll just do that with each one. As you can see, this takes a little bit of time, but it makes for a really nice finish. And I tend to not come out the same spot with each thread so that um, it doesn't create a ridge along there. And sometimes you have to kind of wiggle it in there. And this works well with um, weft faced weaves. Uh, it wouldn't work as well with a, a balanced weave. Mostly because you would see the, you may see the warp thread. Um, and you'd have to weave an over under and then the warp thread is doubled. But this works really well, uh, especially for rugs that, um, I mean, the edges, you're not going to be washing this constantly. Um, the edges aren't going to be seen a lot of wear, so these tend not to pull out. So you can already see how nicely that's looking. So you also want to be sure that you don't, um, that you're going in between uh, the layers and you're not going uh, over one of the weft threads on the other side. So I'll show you. <clears throat> so as you're going in here, if you dive too deep by accident and you can see my needle here, so my weft or my warp thread would show if I did that like that. So you don't want to do that. So if that happens, just pull it back out. And sometimes I'll just flip that over and check if I think maybe I did catch it by accident. <clears throat> so this is a good activity for just sitting on the couch, watching 
a movie or something that you don't have to maybe listening to an audiobook um, something you don't have to pay a whole lot of attention to if it's a movie that might not be good because then you're gonna miss part of the movie but because you do have to look what you're doing um, I'll do this while I'm streaming maybe a series that I've watched already and um, I'm just uh, re-watching maybe you know the great British Bake Off or something what uh oh My vacuum cleaner was attacking the uh, heating register in the other room. <laughs> so, not sure what that was about. Alright, so now I've got these all uh, in. And I don't have any that are sticking out on the uh, front side. So now, what I'm going to do is I'll take each one and I'll give it a little tug and then clip it real close. And I give it that tug so that when I clip it, it will pull back into the weft. And be sure you don't catch your weft, because um, that would be a bad thing. So now we'll just give that a little tug and if any don't work down back in just kind of take your tapestry needle and push those back in all right so now we can uh, work on what to do with our full Damascus set so let's go ahead and take a look at the front And as you can see, that's a nice, uh, clean finish. Um, you can't see any of the uh, warp uh, sticking out and it will lay nice and flat. So now let's figure out what to do with the full Damascus side. So with this, um, because it's, you can see that the fringe is coming out between the two ridges of the Damascus. So, except for this last one, which wants to go up, um, it will tend to naturally lay this way. So, we can take this and we could uh, trim it off. So let's do that for, and if I was doing this um, for my final rug, I would use a cutting mat and a straight edge. Um, so let's, let's say we want, Let's say we want our fringe to be four inches. Okay, so that's about four inches right there. there. So that'll give us a good indication of what it's going to look like. Now, uh, let's say we want to do a twisted fringe. Um, you can... You can twist by hand, or 
yeah, you can twist with a fringe twister. So to do a twisted fringe, I would take uh, two warp threads in each hand, and then I would twist them with my fingers. And I would try to twist them um, the same amount. And I'm going to twist them in a, I believe that's a counterclockwise uh, way. And I'd probably count how many times I twisted it. And I'm not very good at doing this by hand. But I'm going to twist these up pretty tightly. Maybe 15 or 20 twists. So you can see how they're trying to corkscrew. So now that I've got them twisted to the amount that I desire, I'm going to put them together and hold them in one hand and I'm going to tie an overhand knot. Again, go around your finger, and this is a little tricky because you're trying to hold the twist in there still, and it wants to kink up on itself. And then take and place your knot at about the length that you want your fringe to be. And I use, again, I use my uh, tapestry needle to kind of help position that knot. Now, when this plies back on itself, it's going to get shorter. So I'm going to make this a little bit longer than what my four inches is. And I'm going to pull that knot tight and then I'm going to let go. And that will let it ply back on itself and now I have a nice twisted fringe. However, I like to use a fringe twister. All right, so we're going to, again, take two sets of two and I'm going to use the little clamps on my fringe twister and I will clamp them at this about the same point on each one and I can do two fringes at the same time with this little guy so you want them to be about the same length and the same tension now we're going to uh, twist this in the, uh, and I should have gone in the clockwise position the other when I did the other one. We're going to turn this in a clockwise position, and we're going to count the turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, that's pretty darn tight. So I'm going to say uh, 15 twists. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to untwist one so that I can get to these. I'm going to unclip one set. And I'll leave the others clipped right now. And then I'm going to tie my overhand knot. and get that down to where I wanted it, which is about there, and then tighten that knot up and let go and it will twist. So you can see this one, I actually twisted the first twist the wrong way. Uh, you want to twist the same direction as the yarn is. So this is twisted uh, this way clockwise 
um, it's been plied on itself. So that's the initial twist that you want to do. You want to add more twist and then uh, and then when it untwists, uh, you get this nice little um, twisted braid. So let's do this one. And we'll tie our overhand knot. And, and I'm not really very good at getting these the same length. So, oh, I did really good there. Okay. So let's do a couple more of those. And um, if I were doing this <clears throat> uh, for my final rug, I would measure out on my warp uh, where to put my clamps because I want the twist to be the same in each one of these and I want them to be the same length. So we're going to go ahead and um, twist this again and I'll see if I can get you closer so that you can see better. <clears throat> All right, there we go, that's better. So um, you actually can't see still. There, that's, now you can see. All right, so let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, and then you can take the clamps off the first one. And you can see how it's wanting to twist, ply back on itself. So basically what you're doing is you're over plying the two strands. And then when you put them together, uh, they ply back on themselves and create that twist. Those actually came out pretty even. Um, this one is kind of funky. Now, if I wanted to redo that one, I could. Um, I could undo that and untwist it and separate those two and then untwist those two and I am back to having two untwisted braids. Okay, so now we can twist those by hand. I'm going to our overhand knot, come down to about the same distance, and let it fly up. There, perfect. All right, so now how to treat the next uh, section. Um, we can do a braided fringe, so you could do 
uh, say a three strand braid and that would look like this and you can just go down as long as you want it to be so it's rather small um, but you can do that And you could get really fancy and do some um, cross braiding between the tassels, between the fringe braids. Okay. And we'll just pretend that that is long enough. And then you do your overhand knot at the end of it. There we go. That looks very nice. Um, you could do two strands per braid. And this just gives the braid a little more uh, volume than having just three strands in there and this works well if uh, if your warp fringe is real long like mine is um, it might be a little more challenging if you're working with a warp fringe that's short um, so we'll go ahead and tie that one off Okay, so see that looks very nice. Um, you could do a four strand braid. So there's a couple different ways to do a four strand braid. But the one that I like, um, you take the left hand two and you cross the left under the right. You take the right hand two and you cross the right over the left. And now you take the middle right, you cross it under the middle left, and then you start over. Left under right, right over left, middle right under middle left. We go under, over, under. And it's a little more challenging if you're trying to make it so that you can, somebody can see what you're doing. Um, because normally I would keep my fingers on here and keep everything situated and then under. So we go under left, over right, under right. All right, so. I'm not sure I'd want to do a whole rug with that one. That one. I would get impatient with it. <laughs> okay. But there is your four uh, and then you could also do um, two although this might get a little big you could do two threads per 
goes over. And this one goes under. So I rather like it more with um, two threads per strand because it does give more definition to the braid itself. And it, uh, it'll lay nice and flat. All right, so then we're going to do our overhand knot. These knots can get a little bit big if you're using, you know, eight strands. Um, go over here. But, you know, whatever works for you. So if you're having trouble getting one of them in there, just kind of use your tapestry needle. There we got them. Okay. So you can use that tapestry needle to uh, kind of finagle them around. All right. So I rather like that one. Um, yeah. So he tends to want to twist, but that's okay. All right, so let's flip it over so that you can see what it looks like from the correct side. Okay, so here we are on the front side of the rug, and you can see each of the different finishing techniques, all with a Damascus edge. Um, this here is using a half Damascus. And you can see that where I knotted them, um, it does stick up a little bit, um, but with a nice thick rug, that wouldn't be a problem. Uh, this lays nice and flat and is very uh, kind of low profile. Uh, the fringe ones, uh, I would say that using, um, braiding with uh, three three strand braiding either with um, one one warp thread per strand or two warp threads per strand those tend to lay nice and flat um, the four strand braids want to twist uh, so this nice flat one using two strands per or two warp threads per strand, it wants it wants to twist, and that is probably a uh, because of the twist in the warp th yarn. Um, so if you want it to twist and you're fine with that, that would be a kind of a cool look. Um, however, if you're wanting it to lay flat. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to do that. Maybe if we wet finished it and um, blocked it and pinned it, then it might lay flat. Um, that would be a good thing to try. But this is a good reason why we sample and uh, figure out what we want to do before we actually do the final product. Um, and then this little guy over here um, with the knot at uh, either end. Uh, I don't think you need the, the knot up here because you've got the Damascus edge. Um, but you can see that the full Damascus and the half Damascus are very similar looking on the front side. The difference being on the back side um, and where the warp yarn uh, comes out. So with the full Damascus, the warp will come out between the two ridges. And with the half Damascus, it comes out to the back of the rug 
or whichever side you do first. Uh, so if you did the half Damascus, starting with the rug facing with the front up and starting on the right, then your uh, warp yarn would would continue would try and lay to the front of your rug and you don't want that so that's why you start on the back um, so that's it uh, i hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful um, the next video in this series we will be doing uh, another uh, finishing technique and i think we will do the twined warp or the woven warp and that was uh, sampled on the big blue and white rug that I showed you earlier. Um, so thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel to see future videos. Thanks and happy weaving.